today at Hatfield Hospital, which is part of the London Pain Clinic, with one of the doctors, Dr. Artham Singh. So what are migraines and what are the causes? Um, migraines are chronic, uh, in normal cases, chronic long-term headache problems that can affect an individual over many years. Um, these uh, headaches typically are predominantly normally one-sided uh, and they can sense, uh, are centered over the top of the head but can really be focused behind the eyes. There can be a, a variety of associated symptoms with this um, which may well include uh, visual disturbances and a sensitivity to light but can be quite significant that they may, patients may want to just lie down and, and rest while they have them. There can be a significant amount of uh, nausea and, and, and vomiting associated with this, so hence these patients are really do have a disabling condition. Um, the causes can be varied. Um, in some cases there's been, you, you're just born with them, the patient may well be just um, much more sensitive to having these migraines. But in most cases, there is a, normally a trigger. And these triggers can be um, stress-related, you know, your environment, uh, something in the air, possibly an environmental, pro uh, environmental thing. But sometimes it can be associated with other triggers, such as food substances or, or, or something that one drinks, uh, particularly maybe alcohol um, or, or, or certain types of food products. Um, so in these cases, the, the, you know, patients normally are able to avoid the majority of the triggers, but sometimes they occur spontaneously. And what are the signs and symptoms of migraines? So in most cases, uh, patients who suffer from migraines normally have a prodrome. Uh, and that might well include a, a change in their behaviour or anxiety. Uh, they may even start sweating. Uh, and they become a bit concerned that uh, a headache is about to occur. Normally the, uh, the migraines are, is associated with a headache and it's, as I mentioned, typically one-sided. It's normally experienced on the top of the head but can then focus behind the eyes. Sometimes associated with the migraines, they may well get other aura and these can include a visual disturbances or flashing lights or, or some degree of specks in their eyesight. But in essence, I think they tend to get quite a significant amount of um, uh, light sensitivity. So you might see patients trying to avoid the sun and might include turning the lights off just to sort of reduce that sensitivity. Patients may then also include, um, uh, might have uh, nausea uh, where they feel quite sick and actually vomit when they're having this significant sort of migraine attacks. These attacks can last um, for a variety of times. Some people quite significant last for the whole day. Some people sort of experience these migraines for a number of hours, but usually during those periods, depending on the severity, most patients who experience migraines um, could well suffer for a, a, a quite significant period of time and they may well have to leave what they're doing. They may well have to go home and just basically rest. Um, there are atypical cases where patients may well not have a typical migraine associated, uh, like a headache associated with their migraines. They may well just have the aura with, with the visual disturbances, but in essence, normally uh, migraines are associated with the headache. And what is uh, the treatment for migraines? So the treatment for migraines can vary quite significantly. I mean, it's a difficult condition to, to deal with. Um, what we would suggest is that, you know, the patient takes, you know, uh, responsibility of their migraines and looks at their sort of lifestyle to see if there are any obvious triggers. This may well include sort of uh, work problems that or stresses at work or, in, or possibly at home and try and reduce these stresses if at all possible. Clearly if there is a triggering factor in their normal day-to-day -day life then clearly this needs to be avoided and, and that needs to be addressed. Um, also we get them to look at their food uh, what they're drinking and seeing if there are any obvious sort of triggers from that point of view. And it may well need to, to involve abstinence of those products but even moderation 
is possibly significant enough to reduce the onset of these migrant issues. Um, on top of that, if the problem still continues, then medications are a possibility. And there are preventative medications that we can use, and simple things like uh, analgesics, paracetamol, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. But also on top of that, there may well be medications that may well help to use uh, on top of those medications to prevent the migraines from happening. And this can be discussed with your uh, chronic pain consultant or neurologist. Um, there's also medications in particular that they use specifically for migraines when the migraines start. These include the triptans. Uh, and again, the specific triptan would be uh, suitable, uh, would be chosen specific to that patient. If after all that, um, uh, the patient still suffers from migraines despite all their best efforts, then you know, we, we are able to perform uh, Botox procedures. Uh, and this is the delivery of Botox to certain areas of the face as well as the scalp to try and reduce the tension and the pains uh, that patients experience, when they exp particularly when they're having the headaches. Uh, we can perform these procedures in a uh, clinic environment uh, with a very, very small needle uh, and can be done as a day case procedure. They normally, the normal procedures uh, take about 20 to 30 minutes and we normally monitor the patient afterwards for 5 to 10 minutes but it is normally possible for the patient to then uh, go home the same sort of, the same, same day. Uh, we would have to consent for, uh, you know, bruising. We have to consent for infection. But this is performed in a, in a sterile manner to ensure that this doesn't happen and the side effects are quite minimum. The, the percentage of improvement of these patients who's, who get Botox are pretty good. And this option can be discussed with your pain consultant. If you would like any more information about the London Pain Clinic or you would like to book an appointment, please visit the website www.londonpainclinic.com.